I had always been drawn to abandoned places. There was something hauntingly beautiful about the remnants of forgotten lives, stories left behind in the dust and decay. So, when I heard about the old Stonebridge Hotel on the outskirts of town, I knew I had to explore it. The hotel had been closed for decades, its grand facade slowly crumbling under the weight of time. Locals avoided it, claiming it was haunted. But I never put much stock in ghost stories. I arrived at the hotel on a dreary, overcast afternoon. The building loomed before me, its once majestic exterior marred by years of neglect. The windows were boarded up, and the front doors hung ajar, creaking softly in the wind. I hesitated for a moment, the weight of the place pressing down on me, but curiosity won out. I stepped through the doors, the floorboards groaning under my weight. Inside, the lobby was a shadow of its former self. Dust coated every surface, and the air was thick with the scent of mold and rot. I could barely make out the faded grandeur of the decor, the remnants of a chandelier, tattered drapes, and a reception desk covered in cobwebs. I snapped a few photos, my footsteps echoing eerily in the empty space. As I ventured further into the hotel, I felt a growing sense of unease. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the occasional drip of water or the distant creak of settling wood. I tried to shake off the feeling, reminding myself that it was just an old building, but the hairs on the back of my neck refused to lie flat. I made my way down a long corridor, the dim light from my flashlight casting flickering shadows on the walls. The doors to the guest room stood open, revealing glimpses of faded wallpaper and broken furniture. I peeked into a few, finding nothing but decay and emptiness. Then, at the end of the hall, I saw it, a door that was closed. I approached cautiously, my heart pounding in my chest. The door was heavy and ornately carved, unlike the others in the hotel. I hesitated, my hand hovering over the handle, before finally pushing it open. The hinges screamed in protest, and I stepped inside. The room was dark, the only light coming from my flashlight. It was larger than the others, with a massive four-poster bed draped in tattered fabric. An old vanity stood against one wall, its mirror cracked and fogged with age. As I moved the beam of light around the room, it fell on something that made my blood run cold. In the corner, half hidden by shadows, was a figure. I froze, my breath catching in my throat. The figure was motionless, draped in what looked like an old hotel uniform. I stepped closer, the floor creaking beneath me. The figure remained still, and I realized with a jolt that it was a mannequin. I laughed nervously, relief flooding through me. It was just a prop, likely left behind by the hotel staff. I approached the mannequin, curious to get a closer look. It was eerily lifelike, its glassy eyes staring blankly ahead. I reached out to touch it, and as my fingers brushed its cold surface, I heard a sound that made my heart stop, a faint whisper coming from behind me. I spun around, my flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. There was no one there. I told myself it was just the wind, or maybe the building settling, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I quickly backed out of the room, pulling the door shut behind me. As I made my way back down the corridor, the sense of unease grew stronger. The air felt colder, and the shadows seemed to move just out of the corner of my eye. I quickened my pace, my flashlight shaking in my trembling hand. I needed to get out of there. I reached the lobby and made a beeline for the front doors, but they were closed. I pushed against them, but they wouldn't budge. Panic set in as I realized I was trapped. I spun around, my flashlight beam darting around the room. The shadows seemed to close in and I could hear faint whispers all around me. I backed away from the doors, my mind racing. I needed to find another way out. I spotted a staircase leading to the upper floors and decided to try my luck there. I ran up the stairs, my footsteps echoing in the empty building. The second floor was just as decayed as the first, but I didn't stop to look around. I moved quickly, my flashlight flickering as I searched for an open window or another exit. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, and I felt a cold presence pressing in on me. I found a room with a broken window and hurried inside, hoping to climb out and make my way down the fire escape. But as I approached the window, I saw something that made my blood run cold. Written on the wall, in what looked like dried blood, were the words, You can never leave. I stumbled back, my heart pounding in my chest. 
The whispers were deafening now, a chorus of voices that seemed to be coming from the very walls. I turned to flee, but the doorway was blocked. Standing there, in the same old uniform, was the mannequin. But it wasn't motionless anymore. Its head turned slowly to face me, its glassy eyes filled with a dark, malevolent intelligence. I screamed and ran to the window, desperately trying to climb out. But the fire escape was gone, the rusty metal ladder lying twisted on the ground far below. I was trapped. The whispers grew louder, filling my mind with their dark, incomprehensible words. I turned back to the mannequin, but it was gone. The room was empty, save for the echoing whispers and the oppressive darkness. I felt a cold hand on my shoulder and screamed, spinning around to find nothing but empty air. In my panic, I backed into the wall and sank to the floor, my flashlight flickering and finally going out. The darkness closed in and the whispers filled my mind, drowning out my thoughts. I felt the cold presence all around me, pressing in, suffocating me. And then, just as suddenly as it had started, the whispers stopped. The darkness receded, and I was alone in the room. The words on the wall seemed to glow faintly in the dim light. I knew then that I would never leave the Stonebridge Hotel. It had claimed me, just as it had claimed so many others before me. In the end, I became just another forgotten story, another soul lost to the darkness of the old hotel. And as the years passed, the building continued to decay its secrets buried deep within its crumbling walls. But on quiet nights, when the wind howls and the shadows dance, you can still hear the whispers of the lost, forever trapped in the haunted halls of the Stonebridge Hotel. Working as a night cleaner at the Grand Vista Hotel was not my dream job, but it paid the bills. The old hotel, with its faded elegance and creaky floors, had seen better days. Once a grand establishment, it was now a shadow of its former self, struggling to maintain its dignity amid peeling wallpaper and flickering lights. I started my shifts at 10 p.m. long after the last guests had retreated to their rooms. The hotel was almost always empty, save for a few long-term residents who kept to themselves. My job was simple. Clean the hallways, mop the lobby, dust the antique furniture, and occasionally tidy up the vacant rooms. From the moment I began working there, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The air was heavy, almost suffocating, and the silence was deafening. The hotel seemed to breathe, groan, and whisper secrets I couldn't quite hear. One night, as I was mopping the lobby, I noticed a strange figure at the far end of the hallway. It was a man, dressed in an outdated bellhop uniform, staring at me with an unsettling intensity. I blinked, and he was gone. I shook my head trying to dismiss it as a trick of the dim light and my overactive imagination. The following nights, I began to notice other odd occurrences. The lights in the hallways would flicker and dim whenever I passed, and I would catch glimpses of shadows moving just beyond the edge of my vision. One time, I found a room that wasn't on the hotel's layout, its door slightly ajar. Inside, it was filled with dust-covered furniture, as if it hadn't been touched in decades. Curiosity got the better of me, and I entered the room, feeling a chill run down my spine. The air was colder in here, and the shadows seemed to cling to the corners, refusing to be illuminated by my flashlight. As I moved deeper into the room, I noticed a large, ornate mirror on the far wall. Its surface was cracked and fogged with age. I stepped closer, my reflection distorted and fragmented in the cracked glass. Suddenly, I felt a presence behind me. I spun around, but the room was empty. The door, however, was now closed. My heart pounded in my chest as I approached it, my hand trembling as I reached for the handle. It was locked. I tried to calm myself, telling myself there had to be a rational explanation. I turned back to the mirror, hoping to find some clue as to what was happening. To my horror, the reflection showed the room as it had been in its heyday, clean, well-lit, and bustling with people. But these people were not ordinary guests. Their faces were pale and expressionless, their eyes hollow and empty. One figure stood out among them, the bellhop I had seen before. He stepped forward, raising his hand to point directly at me. I stumbled back, my heart racing. The reflection faded, returning to the dusty, abandoned room I was trapped in. Panic set in as I pounded on the door, shouting for help. The air grew colder, and I felt as if I were being watched by unseen eyes. 
After what felt like an eternity, the door creaked open, and I bolted out of the room, not daring to look back. I raced down the hallway, my footsteps echoing in the oppressive silence. When I reached the lobby, I collapsed into a chair, gasping for breath. I decided then and there to avoid that part of the hotel. A few nights later, I was cleaning the grand ballroom when I heard faint music. The room was supposed to be empty, but the soft strains of a piano echoed through the air. I followed the sound, my heart pounding. As I entered the room, I saw the grand piano in the corner, its keys moving on their own. The figure of a woman in an old-fashioned dress stood beside it, her back to me. I called out to her, but she didn't respond. She simply continued to play, the haunting melody filling the room. I stepped closer, and as I did, she stopped playing. The silence was deafening. She turned to face me, her eyes hollow and dark. Her mouth moved as if she were trying to speak, but no sound came out. I backed away, terror gripping me. The next thing I knew, I was running through the hotel, the echoes of my footsteps mingling with the whispers that now seemed to come from every direction. I could feel them closing in on me, unseen hands reaching out from the shadows. When I finally reached the lobby, I grabbed my things and fled the hotel, vowing never to return. I quit my job the next day, but the memories of that place haunted me. I couldn't escape the feeling of being watched, of whispers in the dark corners of my mind. I tried to move on, but the Grand Vista Hotel had left its mark on me. Months later, I read in the local paper that the hotel had been condemned and was set to be demolished. I felt a sense of relief, thinking that whatever haunted that place would finally be put to rest. But on the night before the demolition, I had a nightmare. I was back in the hotel, the bellhop and the woman in the old-fashioned dress standing over me, their hollow eyes staring into my soul. When I woke up, I felt an inexplicable urge to visit the hotel one last time. I drove there in the dead of night, the building looming like a dark sentinel against the sky. The demolition crew had already set up their equipment, and the area was fenced off, but I found a way through. Inside, the hotel was eerily quiet. I made my way to the grand ballroom, the memories of the music and the woman flooding back. The piano was gone, but the air was still thick with the oppressive presence I had felt before. As I stood in the center of the room, I felt a cold hand on my shoulder. I turned around, and there they were, the bellhop and the woman, their eyes hollow and dark. They reached for me, their whispers filling my mind. I tried to run, but my legs wouldn't move. The shadows closed in around me, and the last thing I heard was the sound of the piano playing that haunting melody. The next morning, the demolition crew found my car outside the hotel, but I was nowhere to be found. The Grand Vista Hotel was reduced to rubble, but the whispers of those who had been lost within its walls continued to haunt the town. I had become just another ghost, another lost soul trapped in the darkness of the old hotel. And as the years passed, the townspeople spoke of the hotel in hushed tones, warning others to stay away from the cursed place where the echoes of the past could never be silenced. I've always been a bit of a skeptic when it comes to ghost stories. I pride myself on being rational, grounded in reality. So when I heard the legend of room 616 at the old Hawthorne Hotel, I shrugged it off as nonsense. The story went that anyone who stayed in that room never came out. The staff wouldn't even enter it. Yet, it intrigued me enough to want to debunk the myth personally. I arrived at the Hawthorne Hotel late one evening, the sun already dipping below the horizon. The building was imposing, with its grand, albeit fading, Victorian architecture. The lobby was quiet, the receptionist barely looking up as I approached the desk. I'd like to check into room 616, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. The receptionist's head snapped up, her eyes wide with surprise and fear. I'm sorry, but that room isn't available. I'll pay double, I insisted. I just want to stay there for one night. She hesitated, then reluctantly handed me the key. It's your funeral, she muttered under her breath, loud enough for me to hear. Undeterred, I took the elevator to the sixth floor. The hallway was eerily quiet, the kind of silence that makes your ears ring. The lights flickered as I walked to the end of the corridor. Room 616 stood there, its door looking no different from the others. I unlocked it and stepped inside. The room was surprisingly normal, 
a standard hotel room with a bed, a dresser, and an old television. The wallpaper was a bit dated, and the air had a slight musty odor, but there was nothing outwardly sinister about it. I set my bag down and explored the room, finding nothing unusual. As the evening wore on, I settled in with a book, the lamp by the bed casting a warm glow. Everything seemed fine until I heard a faint scratching sound coming from behind the wall. I tried to ignore it, telling myself it was just the building settling, or maybe a rat. But the sound grew louder, more insistent, like nails scraping against wood. I got up and pressed my ear to the wall, trying to pinpoint the source. The scratching stopped abruptly, replaced by a low, almost imperceptible whisper. It was like someone was speaking on the other side of the wall, but the words were garbled, indistinguishable. A shiver ran down my spine, and I pulled away. Returning to bed, I turned off the light and tried to sleep, but the room felt different now. The air seemed heavier, colder. I pulled the covers up to my chin, every creak and groan of the old building amplified in the darkness. Just as I was about to drift off, I heard the whisper again, louder this time, coming from the direction of the closet. I sat up, my heart pounding. The closet door was slightly ajar, a sliver of darkness beckoning me. Summoning my courage, I got out of bed and approached it. The whispering grew louder, almost frantic. I reached out and flung the door open, the light from my phone illuminating the inside. It was empty, just a small, dusty space with a few old hangers. But the whispering continued, now coming from the floor beneath the closet. I noticed a loose floorboard and pried it up revealing a dark, narrow passageway descending into the darkness. Every rational thought screamed at me to stop, to leave the room and never look back. But my curiosity overpowered my fear. I grabbed the flashlight from my bag and squeezed into the passageway, the walls pressing in on me as I descended. The passage led to a small, dimly lit chamber. The air was damp and cold, and the walls were covered in strange symbols that seemed to pulse with a faint, eerie glow. In the center of the chamber stood an old wooden chair, and sitting in it was a figure, bound and gagged. I approached cautiously, my heart in my throat. The figure was a man, his eyes wide with terror. He was emaciated, his skin pale and clammy. I quickly removed the gag and tried to untie him. Who did this to you? I asked, my voice shaking. The room, he whispered hoarsely. It wants us, it feeds on us. You need to leave before it's too late. I barely had time to process his words when the chamber began to shake violently. The symbols on the walls glowed brighter, and the whispering turned into a cacophony of voices, all screaming in unison. I grabbed the man and tried to drag him back up the passageway, but he was too weak to move. Go! he screamed. Save yourself! With a heavy heart, I left him behind, scrambling up the passageway as the walls seemed to close in around me. I burst out of the closet and slammed the door shut, my mind reeling. The room was now filled with an oppressive darkness, the whispering voices louder than ever. I ran to the door, but it wouldn't budge. The handle was ice cold, and no matter how hard I pulled, it wouldn't move. I was trapped. The whispers grew deafening, and I could feel an icy presence closing in on me. Desperation took hold, and I pounded on the walls, shouting for help. The shadows in the room began to twist and writhe, taking on ghastly forms. I backed into a corner, my flashlight flickering and finally going out. As the darkness enveloped me, I felt a cold hand grip my shoulder. The whispering stopped abruptly, replaced by a voice that seemed to come from within my own mind. You belong to us now. I screamed, but the sound was swallowed by the darkness. The room seemed to collapse around me, the walls closing in until there was nothing but cold, suffocating blackness. The next morning, the hotel staff found room 616 empty the door wide open. My belongings were still there, but I was gone. Just another victim of the cursed room. The staff quickly closed the room off, adding another layer of mystery to the legend of the Hawthorne Hotel. And so the room remains, waiting for the next curious soul to wander in, never to be seen again. The hotel stands as a silent sentinel, its secrets buried deep within its walls, and on quiet nights if you listen closely, you can still hear the whispers of those who were lost, forever trapped in the darkness of room 616. I never intended to work at the Riverwood Hotel. I needed a job, and they were hiring. Simple as that. 
The place had an old world charm. Nestled near the banks of a meandering river, its brick walls covered in ivy. Locals spoke of it with a mix of reverence and fear, but I brushed it off as small town superstition. What mattered to me was the paycheck. My first few weeks were uneventful. I worked the evening shift, checking in guests and handling the occasional complaint. The hotel was usually quiet, the hallways dimly lit, the decor outdated but well kept. It wasn't until one particularly stormy night that things began to take a darker turn. It was a Friday evening and the storm outside was raging, thunder echoing through the empty lobby. I was alone at the front desk, staring at the clock and counting the minutes until my shift ended. Around midnight, the power flickered and then went out completely. I cursed under my breath and grabbed the flashlight from the drawer. The emergency lights kicked in, casting an eerie red glow over the lobby. I called the maintenance line, but no one answered. I remembered hearing that the breaker box was in the basement, and since I couldn't leave the guests without power, I decided to go down there myself. I found the door to the basement near the kitchen. It was old and heavy, the wood splintered in places. I pushed it open, and a musty smell wafted up from below. The staircase was narrow and steep, and the flashlight's beam barely cut through the thick darkness. As I descended, the air grew colder, and the sounds of the storm above faded into a distant rumble. I reached the bottom and found myself in a large open space filled with old furniture and dusty boxes. The breaker box was on the far wall, half hidden behind a pile of discarded chairs. I made my way over, my footsteps echoing on the concrete floor. As I fiddled with the switches trying to restore the power, I heard a faint noise behind me. It was a soft, almost imperceptible whisper, like someone speaking just out of earshot. I turned around, but the basement was empty. I tried to shake off the feeling of unease and focused on the task at hand. After a few more attempts, the power came back on and the basement was flooded with harsh, fluorescent light. I breathed a sigh of relief and started back towards the stairs. That's when I saw it. In the corner of the basement, partially obscured by shadows, was a door I hadn't noticed before. It was smaller than the other doors, made of dark wood, and looked much older. Something about it seemed out of place, and despite my better judgment, I felt drawn to it. I approached the door and saw that it was slightly ajar. I hesitated, a sense of dread settling in my stomach. But curiosity got the better of me. I pushed the door open and shone my flashlight inside. The room beyond was small and cramped, the walls lined with shelves filled with dusty books and strange old-fashioned objects. In the center of the room was a table, and on it lay a large leather-bound book. The air was colder here, and I could see my breath forming small clouds in the dim light. I stepped inside and picked up the book brushing off the thick layer of dust. The cover was adorned with strange symbols that seemed to pulse faintly in the flashlight's beam. I opened it and saw that the pages were filled with handwritten notes and diagrams, all in a language I couldn't understand. As I flipped through the pages, the whispers returned, louder this time. I looked up and saw movement in the shadows at the edge of the room, shapes that seemed to shift and writhe just beyond the reach of the light. Fear gripped me, and I slammed the book shut. The whispers stopped abruptly, and the room fell silent. I backed out of the room. The book still clutched in my hand and hurried back to the staircase. I didn't tell anyone about what I had found. I couldn't explain it, and I didn't want to seem crazy. But the book haunted me. I hid it in my apartment, and every night I found myself drawn to it, unable to resist opening it and staring at the strange symbols and indecipherable text. The whispers followed me. At first, they were faint, just at the edge of my hearing, but they grew louder, more insistent. I started seeing shadows move in the corners of my vision, dark shapes that disappeared when I turned to look. One night, as I lay in bed, I heard a knock at my door. I got up and opened it, but there was no one there. The hallway was empty. I closed the door and turned around, and that's when I saw the figure standing in my living room. It was tall and thin, its face obscured by a hood. It raised a bony hand and pointed at the book on my table. The whispers filled my mind, louder than ever, a cacophony of voices that drowned out my thoughts. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. The figure moved closer, its presence suffocating. It reached out and touched the book. 
and the symbols on the cover began to glow with a dark, eerie light. I felt a cold, sharp pain in my chest, as if something were being ripped out of me. The room spun and I fell to the floor, darkness closing in around me. When I awoke, I was back in the basement of the hotel, the book lying open beside me. The whispers were gone, replaced by a deep, oppressive silence. I got up and stumbled towards the stairs, my body aching and my mind reeling. I left the hotel that night and never returned. I moved to a different town, changed my name, and tried to forget what had happened. But the memories still haunt me, and I can feel the darkness lurking just beyond the edge of my consciousness. I know now that the hotel holds secrets that should never be uncovered, and I fear that whatever I unleashed in that basement is still out there, waiting for its next victim. And I know that someday, it will find me again.